What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. We're here live in Miami at the GoBundance Global Conference. I'm here with our keynote tonight, Ryan Serhant, who, of course, is the star of Bravo's Million Dollar Listing, one of, if not the top broker in the world, an author, bestseller of two books, this one right here, Big Money Energy, I highly recommend, as well as Sell It Like Serhant, course creator, author, all these different things that he is. Welcome, Ryan. Great to have you. Wow, what an intro, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, of course. I want to go back a bit. Actually, we have a point of connection. My wife is an 07 graduate of Hamilton. Oh! Yeah, yeah. And she came from Lynn Mass, so not far from Topsfield. Yeah. So she might have followed you creepily nice. enough. Nice, But she thinks she saw you in either Hamlet or Macbeth at one point. Were you in either of those so I can prove it right or wrong? I was not in Hamlet or Macbeth, so but I, I, did, no I'll, I did all the theater and all the musicals while I was at Hamilton, so she probably saw me in something. She probably saw me in, like, Streetcar. Gotcha. I was Stanley. I was Stanley in Streetcar. Uh, she might have seen me in Reapers, which is a big one. Purple Heart's one of those. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I yeah. want to start there, uh, because you, you not in the shows, but- I've never an, started a podcast that way before. As an actor. No, they're talking to me about, like, my college theater experience. Well, that's where we're going to go. Okay. You wanted to be an actor. I did. Right? So, yep. and I'm just curious, what was the, what was the, why? Why did you want to be an actor at that time? Do you recall the motivation for you to become one? It was the only thing I was good at. Like, I, my parents made me play every single sport. Um, I had to take every class, you know. Like, Hamilton, when I went there, when I went to college, um, uh, they started to get, like, really kind of, like, left wing, right? It became very, very yeah. progressive, which meant, like, take whatever courses you want. Major in earth. <laughs> like, you know, and my dad is the opposite, right? Yeah. Incredibly strict, incredibly conservative. And he said, if I'm paying for you to go to college, you're going to take a core curriculum. Mm -hmm. You will take biology. You will take math. You will take econ, Spanish, everything. And it, it was all really hard. Yeah. Um, and just it was tough. But theater, even when I was a little kid, was the one thing that I gravitated towards. And maybe it was because I moved around so much. You know, I don't know. But um, uh, when I was younger, theater was the way for one me to find acceptance because mm -hmm. theater kids were weird. And so I was weirder. Yeah. And I didn't have the throwing arm. And I wasn't that fast. Sure. Um, uh, and I got to pretend to be different people. So like dealing with bullies and kind of all that stuff in front of theater kids, I got to be a tree. <laughs> you know, I got to be an old guy. I got to be a girl. I could be whoever I wanted to be. I didn't have to be Ryan. Yeah. Um, and that, I think, stuck with me like and became muscle memory for a while. And so when I graduated school, I was like, I, I have a little money saved up. I have to see if I can do this professionally. Like, otherwise, I'll hate myself for the rest of my life. And I've always been one of those people who says, I'd rather regret the things I did than the things I never tried. So with, you know, like 10 grand, I moved to New York City, and that was the most money I ever had. So I assumed that that would last me for like five years. <laughs> and um, I was going to do theater, film, and TV if I could. Yeah. Yeah, it, did, uh, it didn't quite go that way. You became a hand model, I think, at one point and some other things like that, right? You did, did some things. I Are, did. You have done your research. Well, I did. Well, I'm curious. Was it was the process of being an actor at all? Like, you wanted the result. I get that. And yeah. I, this is a reason I'm asking these questions. Yeah. I love talking about people who have done significant things like you have and some of the, I guess, success secrets that I at least extract from, from reading about you and learning about you. Was the process of being an actor at all enjoyable for you, or was it more... I don't know, work than joy? Was so it more the result is, or the process? So the, uh, great question. Like, this is the problem I have with school. Mm. Okay? Like, s the process of learning to act and the craft I found was important, but you aren't taught the business of being the actor. Yeah. So you go through school, it's four years, you spend all this money, right? You've got this passion. Your parents are like, what the fuck? Mm. Is this really what you're going to do with your life? How are you going to survive? You then graduate. They spit you out into the world and like Godspeed. Mm. And so now I could be Macbeth, like you're talking about, right? Yeah, I could yeah, be sure. Hamlet. I could, you know, I, I could play, you know, Stanley Kowalski that was played by Marlon <laughs> Brown. I'm trained. I'm classically trained. I, sure. I, did, I did Shakespeare in London and all that. And then I go to New York City and they're like, no, you look like a 22-year-old white kid. Be a 22-year-old white kid. Sure. Like I don't, I don't understand. I don't know how to do that. How do I just be myself and then you have to figure out the business of being an actor which yeah. is very very similar to the business of being a realtor and being a salesperson um which i didn't find out so much much later and so without that business acumen and that idea whether it's for art or for actual business like these kids graduate with debt and then are just like like you know bad analogy but like like army veterans that we work a lot with yeah. right in our education program we're like hey thanks so much back on the road best of luck with the rest of your life yeah <laughs> and it's like, no dude I, listen, what, I, what this, do you is, do? this is a passion point of mine my kids go to if you've ever heard of acton academy i talk about it a lot on the show yeah but it's an alternative school for that it teaches kids you know how to explore their curiosity more than hey sit sure. down do this listen to this regurgitate this bell goes off 
crazy to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you struck a chord with me on the education yeah, part. Yeah, you know, like we, um, so fast forward a lot, like yeah. let's say today, and so one of our big businesses is an, is an ed tech business um, where we teach sales training, right, to people all over the world. And when we started that, I thought it was gonna be small for whoever. I didn't realize that there are 4,000 colleges out there, 91 of them teach sales training. As of today, there's 1.1 billion people mm. who classify as part of the gig economy, which means that they sell something, yep. right? Yep. Something. I'm one Maybe of those. it's t-shirts, sure. yeah. you sell podcast service, yep. anything. Yep. Yep. By 2025, 50% of the workforce in the United States will classify as part of the gig economy. Hmm. There's a massive occupational shift that's happening now where the dream, and we've known this for a long time, but sure. the dream is to no longer W-2 till you die. Mm. The dream is now, let me make something of myself. Maybe that's seven jobs right. to start as I figure out which job I want. But you're 1099, you're commissioned over here. You have a tiny that. base salary over here. You're figuring it out. But you got to sell something, and no one, knows, no one knows how to do it. Our first B2B client was J.P. Morgan Chase. It's like, are you serious? <laughs> like us? <laughs> right, Me? Right, right, yeah. Right? Okay, why? You know, like, Because our... The person who teaches our team how yeah. to sell um, is Alice, um, and we have DVDs from '97. I was like, "No way! DVDs. You guys have all the dollars. Yeah. No, you're you took down a skyscraper to build a new skyscraper. <laughs> like that's how much money you guys have. I don't understand." And every other force out there, whether it's independent salespeople or or you know businesses and enterprise solutions, um, they just come at it as we're going to teach you the product. Mm. If you can sell it, we will keep you. If you can't, sales isn't for you. And it's like you have these forgotten salespeople that just haven't been trained who could potentially be really good. And I am like walking proof of one of those. Like I wasn't born a salesperson. Like I didn't get into real estate because I like love crown molding. Right. You know, I'm not like, ooh, double height. Yeah. Like I gotta yeah. have some of that in my life. Um, you know, like I I but I the process of creating deals is very similar to the process of the business of being an actor. And then sitting with someone you don't know as a stranger, like you and maybe you're a buyer or a seller, mm -hmm. is identical to the process of being on stage and talking to a stranger, right? You find something in common and you compliment them. You make a quick friend sure. in 60 seconds. You build that immediate sense of trust. And then you see where the road's going to take you. This is what I love about your story, bringing it back to the point about the actor, the awkward start. So I appreciate you bearing with me on that. Mm -hmm. But you, you didn't love the process of being an actor. You didn't learn what the process of being an actor was. You find sales and you're like, ah, maybe for a year, but eh, I kind of dig this. I, I, there's something to this. So you had a creative outlet you were trying to get. Acting seemed like the thing to do. You wanted the result, not the process. Yeah. You love the process of sales and you've embedded creativity into it, whether it's a music video in a in a in a daffodil <laughs> encrusted yes. apartment or whatever it might be, right? Yeah, your good ability. To, yeah, your ability to get on on a TV show. I just I feel like and tell me if this is accurate or not. I feel like those that have significant success, marked success like you do, they they find, you know, what they're gift and they're great at and they're able to use it in a vehicle where the day to day is what they love, not the outcome. Yeah. Fair? Yeah. I think that Everyone has an oak tree, hmm. right? Like you all have, we all have an oak tree. Um, you just got to figure out what it is. I didn't realize that mine ended up being like sales, you know, and it's sales with some like real estate seeds in there, but it's really sales and yeah. selling um, that I have ended up being passionate about. And that was never the plan. Um, and so then you find those branches. So for me, then like TV, podcasts, books, education, right? Actually selling, building a brokerage, um, everything else that we do end up being branches to that oak tree. Yeah. It's not like I found sales. It was like, you know what? I also like dry cleaners. <laughs> I'm going to go into that business too. You know what else I like? Create, making carpets. Like, yes. You know, <laughs> like I, banner making. Right. right. Yeah. Like yeah. I, 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 you, I, if you can do that. Awesome. Sure, sure. Go for it. Go for it. Um, but for me, I found like the best success is once you figure out what that oak tree is, then build branches because it's worked before. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Just follow that path. I want to pivot over to the book because again, I read I read Big Money Energy recently. Uh, a fantastic book. I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. It was really good. Thanks. Man. You uh, you talk about this concept of big money energy in your Bravo uh, audition, which I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give it away. Buy the damn book. But uh, you talk about bringing this energy. I love the the uh, the uh, uh, what was it? Lincoln Town Car by Day and and yeah, uh, Range Rover by Night. There you yeah. go. 
Yep. You didn't have that, but you could create it. So you, you brought that big that, money yeah. energy, yeah. and you know. But then later, after you get the show, you're meeting with a developer, I believe, and you brought this big money energy, but it yep. ended up being what you call bullshit money energy. Yes. What's the delineation? When do you when do you go into something with that? you know, that dominator suit and yes. all of that, and you're ready to go and you bring big money energy, how does it convert to bullshit money energy? That's one thing I wasn't clear on. Great question. So there is a real difference between fake it till you make it. Yeah. Okay. And really believing in the power of future you. And so for me, big money energy isn't faking it till you make it. It is saying, you know what? I honestly believe in my core identity that I'm going to be X, in 12 months. Mm. Like, I know I can be that guy. I'm going to have this, and I'm going to write it down. Like, I, to this day, every year, I will write down on a piece of paper or in my notes app, like, where I am in one year from today. I love that. I love right? That. What day is it? Is it April 27th? 28th. 28th. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's 4 p.m. as we're recording this. Like, I would sit down and write down April 28th, 4 p.m., 2023. I write now. I have this much in my savings account. I have this mm -hmm. much in my checking account. I just sold this. The company is this size. And get real detailed. Like, I'm wearing a new suit because I haven't bought a new suit in a long to COVID. Um, uh, I weigh this. Like, real, real detailed. Yeah. Um, uh, and if you look at that then a little bit every day, that's like, that's future you as a vision board. Yeah. Um, and it, that's big money energy versus bullshit money energy. Faking it till you make it and bullshit money energy is you saying, uh, no, I do have that Lincoln Town car, totally. Mm. And you're lying, right? Yep. It's, it's, it's lying and running around and telling people that you have things that you don't. I never lied. If they no. had said, show me the car, I'd say, well, I don't have it yet, but I'm going to, yeah, because yeah. that's how much I believe in myself. Um, uh, and that's that delineation. Do you manifest? Do you find when you go back? Do you look back and say, "Wow, you know, like eighty percent, ninety percent of this stuff when you do a year out comes true"? Do you find yourself manifesting most of what you what you put down on paper? Yeah, and well within the year. Amazing. Yeah, I and love it, that. But it's not just me. Like I think anybody can do that, and uh, as long as you're realistic and you're not like, "We'll be married to Giselle." Yeah. <laughs> like Tom Brady won already. Sure, like it's not sure. it's, it's not your yeah. battle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Over. Um, yeah, it's like you know people are like, oh, I wrote, I'm going to win the lottery in the next year. I'm like, no, you do you, that's, you do the exercise wrong. Right, right, like, right. Go, don't do that. No. I mean, do it. Um, whatever works for you. Well, um, you also recall it. You said every day you're recalling it a little bit, and knowing yeah. knowing that version of you is coming, I think is important. So. You got to remember, man. We're so busy, and there's so yeah. much stuff. We're on our phones all day long, and like and now we've got TV in our phone, like everything. By the time you go to bed, like I don't even remember what you did in the morning. Like yeah. what time did I? What did I, did I have breakfast? I don't. Even, and then a year goes by, mm. and then two years. It's like one of the scariest things, but also one of the greatest things about technology is that it it doubles, triples, quadruples time for us mm. because there's so much information created every single day. That's why we know so many things. We're like, oh my gosh, that's never happened before. It's like, no, it has, but you just know it now. Yeah. We just know about it. Yeah. Like Atrocities have happened around the world for the history of the universe, but no one was able to TikTok about it before. <laughs> now they do it and they dance it's, it's and it's right. viral. And yeah. so you're like, oh, dude, did you, did you know that they, they did that? <laughs> um, and so, but it's also scary because like it's this nonstop race. Yeah. Um, and so you have to have something in front of you that reminds you every day of like where you want to go. Mm. Otherwise you're in that damn Tesla and you're just like, pick a location. I don't know. Yeah. And I don't really want my fate to be determined by outside forces. I want to, I did this as a, it's so random Instagram story this morning. Um, uh, like, you know, I, like I don't want fate to control anything for me. I want habits to make the decisions for me. And if you control your habits, your habits will control your fate. Um, and I'm a real, real believer in that. Yeah, no, I love it. The discipline and everything else. Yeah. Um, perfect. Just checking the time while we're live here just to make sure I'm uh, honoring your time. Uh, you're asked a lot about balance, I noticed. A lot mm -hmm. of people ask you, like, how do you strike a balance? How do you strike a balance? Yeah. What I want to know is how do you define balance, first off? How do you <laughs> define balance for you? Mm, so I, I find balance by trying to use my left brain and right brain at the same time. Mm. Right. So like for oh, me, no, I'm, I'm sorry, how do you define it? How would you define balance? Is that what you're going to or I'm sorry? Yeah, I kind of. OK, um, I'm trying to answer your question while <laughs> thinking about how to answer it. <laughs> I um, apologize. Uh, how would I define balance, man? I I, I think I don't know. Um, <laughs> I meant for you. Like, so is balance this even one third with my family, one third in my business, oh, oh, one third like with my, my health? Yeah. Like, like people ask, like, how do I strike a balance? And I often find I think that question is being asked as an out 
Like I have, I, I, you know, you work a lot. Yeah, people ask me it as an out all the time. Right, you work a lot, yeah, so they want like the quick answer. Correct. Like, yeah. yeah well, I, well, oh, well, yeah. Sometimes I get out of balance with my family. Oh, I can't be you. I can't do what you do yeah. because I will not get out of balance with my family. Yeah. So how do you how do you navigate that for you? Is it like you know your family understands that right now you're in build mode, and mm -hmm. so you're going to be balance uh, tilted, I guess, a bit toward the business? Or I'm mm -hmm. just kind of curious how you look at it in your life because you're a busy guy. Yeah. You structure your life in such a way. I, I will be completely honest with you and tell you that I'm really not great at it. Like, I'm not going to give you a bullshit answer. Um, it's, it's something that I try to figure out a little bit, like, every week. What I do know is that I want to wake up happy every day. Mm. And I want, like, the people I love around me to wake up happy every day. And if they don't wake up happy, then there is definitely an imbalance. And sometimes I do work way too much, and I'm not attentive, and I'm not there. And I do not listen you know, and uh, and that's when the balance is broken. But I do try to find synergy as much as I can. So like my wife came with us on this trip. Yeah. She's here. She'll be there tonight. Apparently, as the only woman, um, didn't know that until we got on the plane. There's a couple. And so, a couple on the staff that okay, were there. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I was like, I'm gonna sit you right in the middle. Right see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, she's like, well, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. And so uh, you know, and then we're gonna go away. We're gonna go to Turks and Caicos tomorrow through the weekend. Nice. So that like we can just disconnect for a little bit sure. um, and then get back and then you know i i see the baby saturdays except for this weekend and then two nights a week make sure that i'm home for her um and then some weeks are better than others man and you just have to move forward but here's the last thing i'll say no the the person in the relationship who has all the power is the one who cares the least and so if you want to strike a power balance mm. in a deal in a work relationship with your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your dog, right? You gotta understand who cares the most and then make that decision as to which one you're gonna be um, and what you care about most. And it all comes down to clear and concise communication. That's interesting. Like blunt, honest communication, I'm a very, very big fan of. You know, like if Diego's videos are blurry, I'm not gonna like tell myself, yeah, look at him right now, shaking that camera around, right? <laughs> no, Diego. But yeah, you know, that's why we put him in the cargo hold on the plane on the way here. Makes sense, right? Stick yeah. him under. Yeah. He's great. Diego, you're great. <laughs> um, uh, clear and honest communication is the key to success, man. Like, then no one can say, well, you didn't tell me. Then there's no expectations that are broken. And that's where the balance problem comes in for a lot of people. It's like, well, I don't know the work-life balance. I'm like, have you ever actually sat down and, like, had that conversation? Hmm. And a lot of times they don't, or they do, but they're lying to themselves, or they lie to their spouse or their partner because they don't want to say what they really feel because they think it's going to hurt them or get them in trouble. Oh, man, 100%. Right. I just had this conversation with my wife. I said, look, I, I don't want to be in my inbox anymore. I hired a guy. Handle my inbox, right? Yeah. I've read your thing after, and I was like, holy crap, this guy's got 8,000 folders, so maybe i got to do that. But um, but I said, hey, I even want my wife to go to you to figure out what happens because when my, my wife asks for time on my schedule yeah. or tells me, hey, I need you to do something, yeah. I'll commit to it even though I have something else there and then yeah. figure it out once it comes and then yeah. everything falls to shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. she's like, yeah, I'd rather talk to Mark yeah. and, and say him, hey, block this off for yeah. something with the kids than yeah. me say yes and commit to two or three different things. So that makes a lot of sense. Whoever yeah. cares the least. I get that. That makes sense. Yeah. We're almost out of time. Um, you're speaking tonight. Yep. I'll be there. What are we What are we going to hear? Give me some some well, insider info here. Well, now I don't know because you just went through it all. I'm going to have to like come up with some other shit. Well, this won't be out for a few weeks. So okay, it'll be, but it'll yeah, be but you, I'm going to see you. I'm going to be up there and be looking at you, and you're like, you told me that already, asshole. I'll be like this. Yeah, exactly. The bald, like kind of powdered yeah. after evil look like, that I got well, going on. You'll have that in the back know. of the room. No, listen. I'm like, <laughs> I, I I really care about. Um, entrepreneurs, which is a, a reason that I, I wanted to be here, and yeah. working for yourself and taking initiative, uh, and then building. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs get into business because they think they can do something, mm. and then they have a real hard time doing it with other people. And how do you build that team, and how do you scale human beings, and how do you leverage to build something much, much bigger than yourself? I think that's, I don't know, I'll figure it out when I get up there, but I, I think that's what I'll, what I'll focus on. Got it. We got the one minute warning. Yeah, yeah. Good time to end it. Thank uh, you. But best place to direct people. Website, following where we're at Ryan Sirhant everywhere. There's only eleven Sirhants on the planet. I'm the only one who's public, so pretty easy. S dot. Love it. Yeah. Great to see you, man. I appreciate <laughs> Thanks. you. Thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely.